Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Systems Technology Part 2, Module 4. Uh, we were actually in the last lecture discussing the average quality loss AQL, which we <coughs> figured out as k times of n minus 1 divided by n square of sigma plus mu minus t square. And we further uh, defined the values of mu and sigma by looking at the average of all the observations y i, i varying between 1 and n and sigma to be 1 by n minus 1, sigma i varying between 1 to n, y i minus mu square. So, having said that, what essentially the AQL converts into or what are the different conditions for the different sample sizes n where this value would change significantly, uh, we will have to probably discuss. Okay? And so, the first thing uh, that comes in mind is this, if n is very large, that means we are talking about a large sample size in this particular case, the average quality loss AQL would then be uh, just defined by mu minus t square plus square of sigma times of k. You know, we can assume that n plus n minus 1 is approximately equal to n if the n is quite large. So, in that situation, the AQL will be made up of two components. One of them of course, is the loss k mu minus t whole square and this would probably be equal is, is, is due to the deviation of the average value of y from the target value of y due to the deviation of average quality characteristic. In this case, you may remember that y is the quality characteristic that we are uh, envisioning. Uh, from the target value of the quality characteristic. The second part of this particular loss which is related to the I would say k sigma square value is due to the mean square deviation of y around its own mean. So, this is due to the mean squared deviation around its own mean. So, that is how you can classify these two different components. Uh, one contribution because this reflects how much the average value of the characteristic is deflected or deviated from the target value and the other is basically the mean square error that is pumped into the system uh, from the actual target uh, uh, from the actual quality characteristic to the mean quality characteristic. And so, these two components equally contribute to build up the so called average quality loss. So, the common variations of uh, the <coughs> loss functions uh, are, are quite essential for running a show in a particular business platform. From a customer point of view, of course, the loss is minimum if the quality characteristic is at the target value, but this never happens because sometimes in order to do this, you need infrastructure or you need uh, sort of a you know uh, change of process in a manner which is too expensive the overall quality uh, of the product being high automatically means that the cost of the product would be quite expensive. Okay. So, and also again the factor is that again the expectations of the customers, they would be differing from product to product and this can be characterized when they are uh, at mostly the target values. So, the idea is how the customer perceives a certain product and a quality of the product also is quite variable. Okay. And, uh, you know, depending on what is the characteristic again, what we are measuring, there is going to be a significant amount of variation in the strategy, which you are formulating to calculate the average quality loss. 
So, let us say for example, there are uh, some characteristics where uh, you know if y is at the target or nominally away from the target, it may be reasonably uh, ok. For example, let us say talking about dimensions of a particular shaft, you have a certain diameter d equal to 1 plus minus 0 0.03 inches as the characteristic specification of a shaft diameter. And when you are talking about the quality characteristic which is the measurement of the diameter d, uh, obviously if it is close to this specification range, the better it is and it is away from the uh, mean value that is this one value, the worse it is. So, we call this kind of a quality loss the nominal the best type. So, here essentially you are talking about the loss function uh, represented as k y minus t square to be minimalistic. Okay, because that is what uh, the target of the process would be that the accuracy of the process should be around the mean of the particular specification or the um, parameter which has been given. Some examples could be viscosity for example, or clearance you know these are going to be around the target values the better it is. However, this is not the case when the quality characteristic changes from this uh, uh, numerical values like dimension, viscosity, clearance etcetera into something which is undesirable in the, uh, the system. For example, let us say when we talk about characteristics like wear of a particular you know transmission or maybe shrinkage because of the different temperature stresses uh, which are strains and stresses which are built up in a system or maybe the deterioration of a particular engineering system or a frictional loss associated with any engineering system or maybe we are talking about micro finish of a machined surface among others. So, here the smaller the quantity the better it is. Okay. So, it is not really that whether you are uh, sticking to the target value which has been given obviously, uh, it will be costlier to go below the target value, but these are characteristics where you better not want these characteristics in the system engineering system that you have planned. So, such uh, kind of losses can be classified as smaller the better type. So, here the smaller the better type really means that it is a loss function where we just simply <coughs> represent this by k y square and say that if y is going to go down uh, and meaning thereby the loss is going to go down, it is going to be better and better for the system. So, you cannot really have a target value in such, such an operation. Obviously, the engineering logic behind the target here would be that if at all there was a target, it was because that if you wanted to go lower than that particular target value for the wear rate or for the you know shrinkage, it would be adding cost to the overall system. And so, it will be a trade off between the cost that you are adding and the uh, achievement of less than target values. But obviously, the desirability of any customer would be uh, to sort of eliminate these unnecessary components from the system and they should be minimalistic. Okay. So, that is another perception of the average quality loss. There are certain other parameters which is on the other end of the spectrum where for example, we talk about fuel efficiency of an engine okay, or maybe ultimate shear strength or ultimate yield strength of a material. So, here obviously, the target would be the bigger the better. So, if supposing there is uh, a, a, a fuel efficient engine which is over reporting the efficiency, it is always going to be good from the pers uh, perspective of the customer or the user. For example, if supposing there is a shaft which bears. Uh, more load than what it is what the target values are said to be it is always going to be good for the system because then the breakdowns and the failures would be avoided because of that. So, such kind of systems would tend to uh, have an infinite value of y and we call larger the better kind of systems where we talk about the uh, quality loss as k by y square. So, it is just 1 by y square meaning thereby y is smaller. Uh, the the better and uh, the y is larger the better and better it is for the system and the loss minimizes because of that. So, let us look at what the average quality loss in all these this different uh, functional representations come out to be obviously, the AQL is going to be different if you are talking about nominal the best type or smaller the better type or larger the better type of the quality characteristics. So, let us uh, <coughs> now try to algebraically compute what those values would be and the value for k for let us say the 
nominal the better type. So, that is the case 1 type that we were discussing in the last slide uh, that is given by the loss function L y equals k times of y minus t whole square. So, at functional limit y equal to let us say whatever target value is there plus minus the uh, d value the tolerance the product is supposed to have failed or scrapped obviously, because when we are talking about a let us say a you know target value of the quality parameter y at target t. So, the t plus minus d would really show the USL and the LSL of this particular you know uh, situation uh, here this is t minus t this is t plus d. So, obviously, anywhere outside this domain would be a rejection or a scrap or a failure. So, so would have failed or scrapped beyond the USL and LSL as suggested below you know which comes from this expression y equal to t plus minus d. So, let us say if the unit cost of the product that is in question here is A then A obviously is equal to k d square, where d is this difference between the actual quality characteristic and the target value. right? So, that is k d square, because obviously, if it is beyond d or it is let us say d or more than d, then everything is a cost to the company. So, basically, we are losing the unit cost of the product, because the product is no longer acceptable to be carried forward. Okay? So, therefore, this is the basis of calculation for k here. So, k obviously becomes a by d square in this uh, kind of a situation and uh, similarly for a functional limit y equal to d for smaller the better. we know that L y in this particular case is nothing but k y square and so obviously, in the same manner the a value can be calculated as k d square in this particular case or in particularly larger the better cases there would be a difference that the L y in this case is k by y square. So, the loss or the or the or the loss constant can actually be represented as a d square because obviously when y is at the target d or y minus t is equal to d as you uh, saw before uh, it's going to be uh, taken as a complete loss to the company so there are many ways of calculating the uh, the k value from the different relationships which are available here in both the uh, nominal the better or the smaller the better case, it is uh, reported as the unit cost then otherwise would be lost because of non acceptability of the product by square of d. Whereas, in the case of larger the better the <coughs> k can be actually equal to the cost times of square of d respectively. So, having said that the average quality loss then I mean you know you that also needs to vary I mean it, it will vary because of the different nature of the loss function. So, let us look at how the uh, average quality loss varies in most of the cases. So, the average quality loss a q l for these functions can be shown as let us say for case 1 nominal the best you already know that the loss function l y was equal to k times of y minus t 
uh, square. Okay, and we calculated obviously the loss to be equal to k times of square of sigma plus mu minus t square, where uh, sigma again was equal to one by n minus one square of sigma equal to one by n minus one sigma varying between i and n y i minus mu square and the mu was calculated to be 1 by n i varying between 1 and n y i. Okay. Similarly, for the smaller the better case, you know that the loss function L y is really converted into k y square. So, there is no separate target value, the target obviously is 0 uh, for these kind of parameters. Uh, we already <laughs> investigated the case of wear for example, or friction etcetera. So, in this event obviously, if t is 0, the loss function, the, uh, the you know the a q l function as has been earlier calculated in this particular case as uh, k times of sigma square plus mu minus t whole square, uh, this would only be uh, converted into t equal to 0 case as k times of square of sigma plus square of mu. Okay. And for the case larger the better, the L y obviously then would be equal to k times of 1 by mu square times of 1 plus 3 sigma square by mu square. And there is a proof which exists which I am really not going into at this time uh, for how to calculate the a q l. Uh, corresponding to the L y equal to k by y square. Okay. So, the, we would kind of, uh, we are towards the end of this particular module, but in the next module I would like to actually illustrate more on how this loss function or the average quality loss, which is actually a virtual loss uh, is, uh, is, is needed for taking a management decision. Uh, related to the production and the quality uh, augmentation of a certain system. So, that uh, we will just keep this for the next module. Thank you.